Hey, Fitheads. Today we talk with David Lee, a celebrity photographer, a journalist, and he had a recent transformation that's really cool. He tells us the whole story about how he's gotten fit. He loves talking about fasting and specifically dry fast. Wait, is it wet fast or dry fast? Dry fast. Dry no fast, water. Which it's means crazy. no water. And it gave me PTSD from when I used to cut weight. Uh, for wrestling, but he was like, oh, it's great. You just don't eat or drink anything at all for days. It's fascinating. You got to hear. <laughs> welcome to Total Fit Heads. Serious fitness for not so serious people. Hey, David, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Thanks. So excited to be here. Yeah, it, I really am excited to talk about your transformation. So it sounds like you have an awesome story. Although let's let's get some background on what you were like before the transformation. Tell me just about your background. So um, I I grew up in LA, uh, a suburb of LA called Hacienda Heights, and um, I was pretty much just like the biggest nerd ever growing up. All I did was study and play piano, and um, I got really good grades. And I used to play um, piano with the USC orchestra. Um, Dang. And then I just got totally burnt out with doing all of that. And um, I, um, I really wanted to go to the Teen Choice Awards. So um, that was 1999. And I asked my, um, my editor of this um, online magazine that I was writing for if I could go and cover it for them. And they, she said, sure you can, but we don't know how to get you in. So I ended up calling Seventeen Magazine who was hosting the Teen Choice Awards and I asked if I could cover it for my high school newspaper. And the publicist said, um, she put me on hold and then she announced to the entire room that there was this kid on the line that wanted to cover the Teen Choice Awards. And, um, and um, everyone just started laughing. <laughs> so um, the publisher happened to be in the room and she said, it'd be cute to have somebody young covering the show. So she let me in and I brought my dad's digital camera. It was a Nikon Coolpix 950, 2.1 megapixels. Solid. And um, I was the only digital camera because every, everybody was filmed back then. So I took a picture of the publicist and I showed it to her. And um, that was the first time that she's ever seen anybody use a digital camera. And um, she asked me if I could take two pictures for her. One of InSync with the publisher of Seventeen and one of Britney Spears with the publisher. And she said that she'd give me $1,400 for each picture if I got her those images that night. So of course I said yes. <laughs> and she gave me an all access pass to the awards. And um, I, um, I was just following her around everywhere, taking the most exclusive pictures, having so much fun, hanging out with all the celebrities, meeting all the, the agents, publishers, managers. And it was just like, it was such a surreal experience to me because it was like, I was living, you know, I was seeing, what all the celebrities do. <laughs> and um, that year I became the official digital photographer of a lot of the other major award shows like the American Music Awards, Billboard Music Awards, Grammys. Um, I was going to so many events and I knew that that was what I loved and that's something that I wanted to pursue. So after high school, I took a year off and all I did was cover these award shows and parties. And, um, and then I went to school at UC Berkeley, which was very different. Um, it was a very studious environment and everybody wanted to study and I didn't really want to study. <laughs> All I wanted to do What happened was, to piano? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, and I got so burnt out with piano too, so I stopped playing piano. Jeez. But um, that's how I started with photography. Um, and then, um, then I started doing my own celebrity photo shoots because I ended up knowing a lot of celebrities. And, um, and that's, pretty much, that's pretty much how I got into journalism and celebrity photography. Oh, and then I started traveling. So then I started working with all these different hotel groups. I ended up going to 40 countries for one to four months at a time. So whenever I would go to these destinations, I'd get a job that would take me out there. And then... I would try everything I could to stay as long as I could. So that's where the one to four months came into play. And so um, I would, you know, I'd work with all the best restaurants, I'd say in the best hotels. And, you know, over the years, you know, I started traveling probably around 2006. From 2006 to last year, you know, when you're eating and drinking as much as I was, you end up gaining some weight. <laughs> 
So, um, you know, with all the events and the parties and all that, I, I guess it was just time to make a change. And then when COVID started, I ended up moving back to my parents and um, really focusing on my health and biohacking. And um, I lost, well, I was 185, now I'm 155. So I lost a lot of weight and uh, my mind is so clear and I just love this health and fitness journey that I'm on. Wow. wow that's amazing. <laughs> so how'd you lose, how'd you, what, what were the biggest changes that you made? Well, I started with intermittent fasting. And when I did intermittent fasting, I ended up losing 20 pounds in a month. And um, I think what happened was I was just losing a lot of water weight. So I still had a lot of fat. Um, and then I pretty much plateaued. So after that, I wanted, you know, I wanted to keep on transforming my body. But, you know, if you keep on doing the same thing, it's not going to do anything, right? You have to keep on shocking your body. So then I... Um, I started, I started eating different types of foods. I stopped drinking. Um, I started doing red light therapy. I started exercising on an empty stomach. Um, I mean, so many different things. Just, you know, I, I guess I was just trying everything to see what works and see what doesn't and just, you know, um, just experimenting. Yeah, that's, we're all about that here. It's just like seeing, like, you got to try it out and you got to commit to it for a while. Like, were you trying a lot of these things together or like in isolation if you're, you know, fasting and red light therapy at the same time, which one is the one that worked? Well, you know what? I, I was just doing, I was doing everything. So, you know, I was doing everything, but then I realized that you can't do everything all at once. So you have to keep on rotating things like sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes you have to do intermittent fasting. Sometimes you have to do fasting. Sometimes you have to run. Sometimes you have to swim. Sometimes you have to lift weights. Um, and sometimes you have to eat different types of food. So, you know, I, I was trying all the different types of diets like keto, low carb. Um, I was eating meat for a little bit then I went vegan. So, I think it's all about just doing so many different things to the point where your body doesn't know what's going on. So it just has to release all this fat. Oh, interesting. So it wasn't like I tried a bunch of stuff and landed on vegan. It was like, you feel like you should be vegan for a month and then carnivore the next month. Yeah. I mean, not carnivore for a month. That's, that's like a lot, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe for a couple of days, you know. Oh, interesting. So like cycling through different, it's like muscle confusion, but diet. Yeah, Just muscle tummy confusion. confusion. <laughs> uh, muscle confusion, but diet confusion, and then fasting confusion. You don't want your body to know that it's going to be fed all the time because you want it to be, you know, you want it to keep on burning that fat. Sure. So. Well, well, when you first started intermittent fasting, what was your like eating window? You know, your ratio. Oh, um, my eating window. I started um, six p.m. to two a.m because I would go to all these parties. So like sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes I would I'd be out late at night and, you know, I'd be drinking. So um, that's why I started so late. Yeah, interesting. So you were doing 16, eight, but like into the night. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, so then you go to bed drunk and full and you wake <laughs> up hungover and you can't eat. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that sounds hard. so hard. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, uh, but that's what that so that's what started your your 20 pounds change. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you said that you now you've also experimented with just the, not the intermittent fasting, like longer stuff. Yeah, um, I've done I've done 40. I've done a lot of 40 hour fast. Um, and then I did one 84 hour fast. And then I've done a bunch of 40 hour dry fast which means no water yeah, or liquid what? or anything. Yeah, oh, what? Okay, <laughs> tell me about that. Oof. So um, basically, so first of all, fasting is um, the, the health benefits are, you know, it's autophagy. So your cells start regenerating and um, it just basically cleans out all the junk. When you do dry fasting, when you're not putting any water in your body, you're stressing your body out even more. So the, um, the benefits are, they say it's three times as much. So, um, 
it's at first when I started doing it, I always felt thirsty, but the, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And now it's just like, it's so easy for me to not have food or water. <laughs> 40 hours. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. I, I um, haven't done, I haven't done the 84 hour, um, dry fast yet, but you know, maybe one day. How many days is that? 72. It's like more than it's almost four days. Yeah. Almost four days. I mean, I mean, I've heard on Isn't my research death? before. I yeah. That's a death. That's a, well, that's a death they thing. say, they say that you, you need water, um, you need water for three days or wait. It's yeah. You three need seconds. I'm being thirsty. Oh. Just talking about it. <laughs> they say you need water. Yeah. You need to drink water. Um, you could survive without three days, but there's people that have done it for like, like 30 days. Like I, I've done, I've, I've watched a lot of videos where these people like this one guy, he went to Tahiti to do a 30 day dry fast. And then after his first meal, after 30 days, he ran a marathon. <sighs> and it's all documented <laughs> wow it, was he jesus was this the bible is that the document you're talking about <laughs> no <laughs> no and this guy this this guy was pretty you know he's like in his 60s too so Jeez. it's just incredible what the human body can do and i think a lot of these things that we've learned and we're conditioned to um they're not true <laughs> yeah 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 debunking the myths that we're all that's what we're all about well yeah, tell me what, like, comparing, because I've done traditional, very much chugging water fasts. What is it, like, how does it compare to, do they feel the same, or is it, like, three times as intense? Well, look at it like this. If you're drinking, if you're chugging water all the time, you feel like you're dependent on something, right? Sure. Yeah, So, absolutely. if you cut the water out, and you're used to having no water, you're not dependent on anything. So... It's almost like a new type of freedom and your mind's a lot clearer and you don't feel like, oh, I have to drink water. I have to do this. You just feel like you could do whatever you want. Man, that's exactly how I felt when I discovered fasting. I was like, wait a minute. I don't have to eat every three hours. I won't die. Yeah. Uh, Might be time so to take it to the next I level. I know. It is such a mental block for me, but man, this is convincing. <laughs> have you looked into like the chemistry behind it that your body like once you start running out of water will make its own by like combining hydrogen and oxygen. You... Yeah. Um, the metabolic water. So yeah, when, when your body doesn't have any water, it starts making its own and it's supposed to be very, very hydrating because it's structured and it's amazing. Huh. Okay. I need to do more Googling, but <laughs> not convinced yet, man. But then like, yeah, so you've done a 40 hour fast, but that's actually like doing 120 hour fast because because you've done it with no water wow mm -hmm. jeez that's crazy and i exercise too on um on a dry fast and i don't have any problems do you sweat yeah mm -hmm. sweat comes out like liquid out of your body while yes. you're not taking liquid in oh man i mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is such a block for me How, just, like, how's just your uh, energy oh uh, amazing I so mean, sometimes on, if you go too hard, you're going to get a little lightheaded, but in general, my energy is really good and I don't get tired and I feel great. I think if you go too hard, people would warn against passing out and dying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that everybody should do this. Not everybody Total should Total Fitheads podcast is not medical <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not medical advice. I mean, if, if it's super hot outside, I would definitely not recommend it. <laughs> yeah, electrolyte balance and stuff. Well, Max is kind of acquainted with this, right? You would like dehydrate for our for wrestling. Yeah, we used to cut weight for wrestling um, and feel but great. But it was right? literally just you know we we it wouldn't be for an extended period of time. It would really just be to like sort of wring out all the water in your body, get on a scale, and then immediately hydrate again so the benefits were uh slightly different i mean it was a lot of like can i do this like what you're talking about like you think you need food and then you you realize you don't actually need to eat every two hours or whatever like um but we didn't do it for health reasons <laughs> in fact i would say it was decidedly unhealthy <laughs> a lot of the stuff that we were doing that's why it's 
Whew. That's hard. <laughs> Yeah. Would you ever do anything to actively like at the beginning of your fast or a dry fast or whatever, wet fast, I don't know what wetlands. Uh, would you try to like wring out water? Do you know what I mean? Like would you exercise in the in heat or in the sauna or anything to like get it started? Or do you think it's better to just like slow and steady? Your body's using as much water as it'll use. No, I would I mean I would just drink a bunch of water before I knew that I was gonna do it. And then, you know, just like stock up mm -hmm. and then, um, and then go into the dry fast. Huh. That's so funny too. Cause that was like, <laughs> that was literally like the, the heart, the most hellish thing I used to do. <laughs> we'll get water out of your body. Let's cut weight. Yeah. I, I wonder we if you, it. you had any sort of autophagy in that short term getting all the water out of your body, your your body might have freaked out and like got rid of its crap cells like it does when you fast. Maybe. How many hours did you do it for? I mean, I'm what we would do it for as short as possible, but you try to get as much weight off as quickly as possible. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, a day, but you'd wring out all the water you possibly could. So would you take water, like water pills or something like that to like dehydrate yourself? We, I would cut out all my salt. I would flush out as much water as I could from my body. I would um, get in, sometimes we did Epsom salt baths. That was really kind of, a lot of the stuff that we were doing wasn't um, uh, allowed under <laughs> NCAA rules. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you just, you get a, you get a rubber suit on, you get a couple sweatshirts on put a hat, a winter hat on, you work out, you get a sweat going, you keep it going for as long as you can, get in the sauna, you know, but that was it. We would, I, when I was done, I would weigh myself and then immediately drink as much water as I could or fluids or Pedialyte or whatever. I, I would replenish immediately. So I wouldn't, yours sounds a lot harder. No, <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't, it wouldn't be days. Certainly it would, you know, yeah. So How I'm, do you I know when you're done with your fast? Do you feel like, do you die? <laughs> no, no. Um, I, you know, sometimes I feel like I, I eat, sometimes I'm just eating just to eat. Mm -hmm. Or I, I feel like if I wanted to go longer, I probably could. But I just, I just don't for some reason. Because I love food too. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. but, but after, the, after doing the, the three-day fast, um, the food just tastes so amazing. It's, it's just like when you don't use your taste buds for three days, it's like it's like you taste a strawberry and it's like the strawberry of life. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, so like you're probably doing these like seasonally, like is that kind of like, like every few months or so, or do you have like a a feel for when how often? Oh, so like I'll do a, a 40 hour fast probably like once every one or two weeks just Whoa. to clean out my system. Jeez. It's a lot of autophagy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like anything, it just takes, it just takes practice. And when you keep on doing it, it's almost like nothing. So. Well, yeah, that's how I feel about intermittent fasting. But then I've been doing the exact same thing for like two years now. So I might be my time body, to change it up. Yeah. My body is not confused. <laughs> hmm. Um, one thing that was really interesting too, was that I did a, um, I was on a like low calories for a month. So I was only eating, I averaged out like 1200 calories a day for 30 days straight. And I couldn't lose, like, I wasn't losing any weight. Like I was like 160 and, I, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then, then I ate, I just tried, I wanted to experiment with my body. So I, um, the next three days I ate 2,500 calories in one day, 3000 calories the next day and 3000 calories the next day. And then I lost five pounds. Interesting. What uh, yeah. I mean, um, everything. <laughs> yeah. I was, was it a I was lot just, of super clean. Was it just ice cream and whatever? Or what you... Um, it was mainly clean, but it, you know, it's a lot of calories compared to what I was right. used to. Yeah. I'll say. So I think that my body was holding on to a lot of water and fat. And then when I ate all that food, then it knew that it wasn't hungry anymore. So then it just got rid of a bunch of stuff. 
Yeah, that well, when you eat that little, your body just like starts burning that amount, you know? Yeah. It's generally why yo-yo diets happen. Your body just like responds to whatever you put in it. It's interesting mm-hmm. that it happened that quickly for you though. Mm-hmm. Just three days of overeating and boom, your body's like, okay, I'm gonna start burning again. <laughs> Yeah, that's nuts so so have you you haven't like as you were going through keto low carb vegan was there one that you like felt better on or like wanted to stick with um i don't really like the keto diet because it's like i don't know i love i love fruits and uh i did a test i, I think I, I did a i did this test and it said that i have a sugar and carb addiction so the keto diet was like it was very very restrictive especially if you're doing like like I was trying to do like a keto vegan or a veganish diet. Um, so um, yeah, that was too restrictive, but was generally that just eating butter. No, that's not even vegan. You know, no, <laughs> it's like, it's like eating like um, nuts, avocado, olive okay. oil. Um, and then all the plant-based protein, uh, low carb, um, low carb vegetables, like broccoli, broccoli, Rob, um, what else celery rough yeah (laughs) but you know you learn you learn how to um you learn like what low calorie foods will actually work and are good like um i found keto bread it's at costco Mm -hmm. and it's only 30 30 calories a slice so after not eating carbs for like not eating, eating bread for like three months and then i found this stuff i was like Oh wow, it's only 30, 30 calories. I could eat, you know, you could have like five slices and that's like mm. 150 calories, which is nothing, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. So I had like I would I would have the um I still I still still do it now, but the keto bread, I'll have a slice with um peanut butter and celery, and it's such a delicious snack and it's barely any calories. So, you know, you learn stuff like that that are easy to do. Were you good. were you tracking um if you were going into ketosis on your keto diet? No, I wasn't, but I probably should have. I, I don't know if I was ever in it, but, you know, I don't know. I th- I think I was because I was I was eating such low calorie, low carb stuff. Right. Yeah. It's probably did you ever, did you have the flu where you like kind of felt crappy and had bad breath and. No. Mm-mm. Smooth transition. Yeah. Because I, I, I started doing keto like when I was like well into when after I'd been eating clean for so long. So I don't think I really had like a lot of like toxins in my body like before. Yeah. Like alcohol and sugar and all of that. Yeah, you you said that you cut out alcohol. What mm-hmm. what was what was that choice? What sparked that? So one of my good friends, um, he, he and I would drink all the time at all these parties, and um, he he quit. So. I was like, well, why, why'd you stop drinking? And then he said, he just, you know, he likes it. So um, that's when I decided to do it too. And um, it's been really amazing. Did you and it was really easy to happened? do. Did you notice something happened to your body? Um, psychologically? Just, just my mind was a lot clearer and I could, um, and I had a lot more energy and then, you know, no more hangovers. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the, um, the health benefits are amazing. How are your workouts? Um, much better too. Hmm. I just felt like I had more time to do stuff because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't hungover anymore. Right. Yeah, but how is it <laughs> easy if your your eating window was like to make room for the club, and then set, like that seems like that was a part of your lifestyle, and then you're just like, man, nah, I'll stop doing that. Um, I just I don't know. I just made that conscious decision, and then you know, I, I guess I didn't. I didn't, I didn't need that, you know, drunk feeling anymore. It's not, it's honestly impressive. Like the fact that you're so high performing with all of your photography business and then able to be so analytical and focused on now your body is really interesting. Like, because it started out, you were like, well, I lost, I was, I was working on my photography stuff and then my body went to crap, but now you're completely focused on both it seems or has like the business kind of taken a back seat as you're focusing more on the self well i still do photography but not as much just because people aren't really shooting that much so um 
yeah, I've been focusing a lot more on this health and fitness and eventually, you know, I'll, I'll develop a course and, you know, help other people get into shape too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So you are thinking of like sharing your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've learned a lot. <laughs> cool. Yeah. When you were talking about like how your business kind of caused the weight gain and the, the lack of health, you were talking about like diet and partying or whatever, but like travel, how did that affect you? Because I feel like that just absolutely screws with, with my body if I have to like be somewhere and it seems like you're traveling a lot. Well, I was traveling a lot, but it's not, it's not the typical way that most people travel. So whenever I would go anywhere, I'd stay for a long time. So, you know, like a month. So it would give my body a long, like a lot of time to, uh, to adapt to that environment. Um, most people go, you know, they'll go somewhere for like two days, three days, or even one day. But I never did that consciously because I hated it. You know, it's stressful to go to the airport. <laughs> yeah, especially now. Yeah. Okay, so, got it. So it was more like you were able to stop somewhere and get your habits in order and reset well, there. Would you plan before you got there? Like, would you find your uh, temporary gym or your like temporary st uh, grocery stores or whatever? How would you plan it out? Um, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't really plan it that much. I'm pretty good at improvising and a lot of times I, I, I would be working with the hotels. So they would end up taking care of everything and it would all be there. Um, and then I, I guess I would plan for maybe like three or four days. And then as I got to the destination, then I'd plan another three or four days and I just keep on going and going and going. What's your hotel gym workout looking like? <laughs> um, I mean, it really depends on what 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 they had. So, you know, just you know, like the treadmill or like whatever. I mean, you just have to work with whatever you have. You get uh, you get one twenty pound dumbbell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now um, now like I found I found a pretty good system. Um, have you heard of the Beckford bar? No. Uh -uh. Oh, it's like this pull-up bar. And actually, let me go get it for you guys. I'll show you. Yeah. Yes. New gadget. I love it. <laughs> Beckford. What's your hotel gym? I would never touch the treadmill. Come on. Well, maybe sprints. A little high, high intensity yeah. intervals. The hard part is like, I don't know if you've ever been on one of these hotel gyms, treadmills, but sometimes they're not motorized. It's just like a track around two Oh, you poles. have to hold on? And yeah, so this is like pushing. It's <laughs> so this is it. So basically when you do a push-up, you know, you go like this and you, you do the push-up like this. Uh -huh. And then when you push up, then you go like this. Oh, so, oh cool. Get that upper chest. Yeah, so it, it, it destabilizes your muscles so that you have a lot of, you know, you're working everything. And um, it's like a plank too, so it works out your entire upper body. So Sick. I've been like I, I use this on on my trip to um, Utah, and Colorado, and it was really good. Yeah, does it like collapse? You can fit it in a suitcase. Oh yeah, yeah. It just um, yeah, right. this part it just all comes out, so it's two pieces, and then yeah, you it's easily fit fits in a suitcase. Max, you've been complaining about only doing push-ups in quarantine. There you go. That's true. My elbow, my elbows are killing me. <laughs> yeah. a thousand push-ups a day. <laughs> nice. Solid. That's pretty cool. Well, have you, like, when you were doing all of this experimentation, did you find something where you were just like, "Nope, this is not good. Not doing it." Um, I don't. Hmm. I, mean, I, know you I mean, the keto, keto diet, keto, yeah. yeah, the keto diet is just like, it wasn't, I don't think that was for me. So well, keto vegan though, that's man, you should just be eating <laughs> coin or something. Yeah. Or bacon, but that doesn't seem very healthy. Like, no, like bacon and butter. Does not. Does not. Maybe it's something you do for like a week and then you just get off of it. Yeah, but. Cycle in and out of keto, keto, vegan, fasting. Keto vegan fasting. What week is burger. it today? <laughs> Keto vegan fasting, double cheeseburger. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, need a, sometimes you need a, um, you know, you need to shock your body. So I think every <laughs> once in a while, every once in a while, you get a cheeseburger is fine. A quad, yeah. A quad burger. Yeah. Yeah. Cheat day. What the heck? Of course. Mm -hmm. 
So, well, before you were talking about like you cut out processed food, like how much were you having? Well, I was going to a lot of restaurants that have a lot of really decadent food. So, okay. you know, I was probably shooting like three to four restaurants a week. So whenever I would go there, I'd basically just have everything on the menu. I can't even think about it. I can't even imagine how many calories I was having, you know, with all the rich sauces and the butters and all of that stuff. Yeah, eating out is tough. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it wasn't necessarily processed food. It was like, yeah, they just add butter and salt and sugar to everything to make it taste great. I mean, that's what a restaurant is for. Yeah, but also, you know, like when whenever I'm out and about, I would like I'd be like, oh, I want to get chips, and then I get, you know, chips are really bad. You know, the the ones all the processed stuff. So I think chips are the number one food linked to obesity, and I love chips more than anything in the world. But I think they're far and away the worst. Yeah, so it's just the most fat per per well, mouthful. What's scary to me is when I learned that they are engineered to be unsatisfying. Like they mm -hmm. were made so that you want to continue to eat the chips, and they will never be enough chips. You will like that's insane to me. I mean, it's it makes terrifying. perfect sense, and it's terrifying. Yeah. Well, you know, I saw this documentary about the whole food industry, and basically, what happened was. Do you remember when the cigarette companies were doing advertising to, you know, to kids like Camel and all that? Yeah, sure. So when they did that, they got in trouble by the government. And so they had to stop all their advertising. So they had this idea to buy up all the food companies. And that's exactly what they did. So they bought Kraft. They bought um, a, a bunch of the major ones. And they used the same, um, you know, the same tactics they use for cigarettes on our food. So that would be putting all their addictive toxins and chemicals into the food and all the same types of advertising. So that's what we have now. <laughs> we have diabetes now. Wow. <laughs> Dang. Uh, you, guys, you guys also want to go get some cigarettes now? Or? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> no, I, never, I never smoked. Sitting is the new smoking. So we're all in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you just spent like a decent chunk of time disconnecting, right? Mm -hmm. We're out. Tell us about that because I have never disconnected in my life. I was born with an <laughs> iPhone in my hand. <laughs> well, um, so I just went on this this alignment retreat with my friend. His name is Alan, Alan Torres and he's, he's known as the Genesis Doctor. So Alan, Alan has studied with so many shamans all over the world and he's developed this, this intense you know curriculum of knowledge and um he invited me out on this retreat in colorado so i went with him and um he had i think it was about 20 20 other people and he taught us everything about manifestation and channeling energy and chakras and all these amazing things and um and then after after the retreat was over, then um, we just hit up a bunch of national parks and and um, just meditated and disconnected, turned off our phones and just took a bunch of pictures. So that was really, um, it was a really great recharge and it was a lot of fun. Did you take pictures on your phone? Um, not my phone, just my, my Hasselblad, my real Good. camera. I was just trying to trap you there. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got him. <laughs> <laughs> man i feel like that that's was what happens to me i'm like oh oh i better turn my phone off oh well, gotta take some pictures oh, look at that. <laughs> gotta post to instagram oh look at that another 30 emails oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's on my it's, brain like it's your on. your dopamine addiction <laughs> yeah it really is i do feel like i get rewarded when i when i have it which is why i don't disconnect was there like a period of time whether it be an hour or the first 700 days of getting over it or were you just immediately like okay disconnected i'm good oh i mean there's not a lot of reception out there so you do. you're disconnected automatically but did, did, it, <laughs> did you have anxiety around it or did it did you immediately just like feel more free no i i just i felt more free i mean it's like even you know when there's no reception there's 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 no emf you know, EMF all over the yeah. place and radiation. So I think it's just better for your mental health to be in environments like that. See, EMF, like, it feels like it's important, but also I can't feel electromagnetic frequencies. Like, what the heck? Could you tell a difference just not being around all of that? 
I know LA, San Francisco is really bad, like for us, but I can't sense it. I'll sense it later when I get cancer, at, like forty. <laughs> I, I think you you can really tell when you're when you're away, you know, because yeah. there's no lights. There's, I mean, you can see the stars. Yeah. Um, one of the places that we stayed at was um, it's called Stay at the Domes, and it's in um, Monticello, Utah. And there are these geodesic domes. And um, they're in the middle of nowhere, and it's really nice because you you know you could see the stars, and um, you have a queen size bed, and it's just very comfortable too. So that's a great place to disconnect. That's cool. I feel like I need to go. <laughs> Definitely. Maybe with a hot spot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Well, that also leads me to like sleep. Are you are you tracking that? Do you, are you looking at recovery? Was that a part of your transformation? Um, so the funny thing before, before I started doing all of this, my sleep, like I slept, I could sleep a lot, like eight to 10 hours, no problem. And now, like, now I get probably like six to seven hours of sleep, but I feel rested still. So I'm getting less sleep, but I still feel rested. You're like a better sleeper. You're more efficient, unconscious. For sure. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm jealous. Wow. Was that is how do you track that? Is that do you have a some tracker? Or are you? Um, yeah, it's just it's automatically in my phone. So mm. you just put it down, and then any movement, you know, it knows that you're up. So cool. yeah, yeah. And so you've definitely messed around with sleep, diet, exercise. There's only one more thing in the like fitness triangle and it's the top little bit do you use supplements oh yeah yeah i use <laughs> i use a lot of supplements really i mean i use so many supplements i don't even know what i'm using anymore <laughs> interesting see that that's a tough one for me because then it's like how much effect are they having you know i you know it's it's just kind of hard to tell yeah but i think when you use a lot of them it just makes it helps yeah. Well, I think also another problem is that sometimes it helps or has an effect over a very long term. Sometimes the, you right. know, it's not like you don't take, it's not like an Advil, you take it and your headache goes away. You know, the supplements that we're talking about, like they, they affect your body over months, if not years or, or a lifetime. You don't get, and sometimes they're also preventative. You don't get heart disease or brain cancer or whatever. I mean, obviously. Knock on wood, right? Jesus. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. But it's, it takes a long time. What, what do you, would you just take like a multivitamin? Um, well, I have, I mean, I have so many, I have so many supplements, you know, since, since I'm an influencer, I am getting like tons and tons of stuff. Um, so Flintstones. Yeah. <laughs> lots of Flintstones. Just take whatever gets mailed to you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so then you said that like, there's not a lot of like photography jobs going on now. I'm just like curious how this transformation has affected your work as you know, but is, are there still things that you're doing photography wise or not? Yeah. Um, I'm probably doing like maybe like three or four shoots a month, oh, okay. which is a lot less than before, but that sounds super busy to me. <laughs> Cool. So are you more focused or is it more like you have all this work to put in your body so you're not having time for the business aspect? Um, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm really focused on health and fitness right now. And then whatever jobs come along, then, just, you know, then I do yeah. them. Interesting. As a photographer, can you give us some tips on how to take a cool selfie or Instagram picture? Um, Sure. So whenever, you know, to get the best pictures, you always have to look at your jawline. So your jawline always has to look defined. And also you also have to look at the, um, the catch light in your eyes. So wherever the light source is, it's always going to make like a little reflection. So I'm like, I'm by this window right now. Mm -hmm. So, and actually if I put the, if I put the computer up, see. Then you're more likely to see that catch light in my eyes because it's it's all going down. So that catch light makes you look alive, and if you don't see that catch light, you just have to like 
look more towards the light source. I mean, look up a little more or um, you know, just look at the light. I love that. Huh. I feel like whenever I'm at home or back when I used to go home and see my family, uh, my parents would always be like, oh, let's take a family photo. And then <laughs> they do it in the pitch dark of like a basement, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, guys, we can't, this can't be our Christmas card. Like, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I'd spin everyone towards the whatever window. They need a. They need some lighting. Yeah, maybe a ring light. That'd be a great gift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's well, the worst celebrity you ever took a picture of? The worst celebrity. Hmm. I can't talk about. I can't say anything bad about celebrities. Who's the best celebrity you ever took a picture of? Picture taking experience. Oh, you know, um, not the not I, the prettiest, obviously. Well, um. When I did my photo shoot with Lady Gaga, it was really amazing. Um, so it was at Area Nightclub. I don't know if you guys know what that is. I am not cool that? enough. No, of course not. Okay, <laughs> I have no it, idea. This, was, this was a while ago. This was like in 2007. So you know where Nightingale is? Again, not cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, this was 2007 and this is before her first album came out. So nobody knew who she was. Mm -hmm. So it was just me and her at this club and, you know, the manager of the club. And I'm just, you know, I'm just telling her what to do. And she's like, she was, she was really cool, but she seemed like very, very artsy, very bohemian um, and very spacey too. So I asked her, what type of music do you do? And she's like, I do pop. And I said, you mean like pop like Britney Spears? And she's like, no, pop like German electronica. Like she said a bunch of, a bunch of things. Sure. So um, it was just, it was a surreal experience because, because nobody knew who she was. And then within a couple of months, Just Dance came out and then everybody knew who she was. And then now she's this huge, huge star Mm -hmm. And um, those pictures were actually her first pictures that were published in People magazine. So that's dope. That that was really special. And then cool. I went to um, the night that she won the Grammy a couple of years ago. I went to her party, and that was the first time that I've ever seen her since that one shoot. Mm -hmm. And um, she was so happy. She was dancing on the stage. Well, first of all, this the the party was at this this weird little dive bar in the valley and it was so much fun there were tons Cold. of celebrities there <laughs> max is like <laughs> oh what is, what is it called i i don't i i totally forgot what it was called <laughs> I'll, I'll find out bad influencer <laughs> <laughs> but um adele was there and um jonas brothers and tons and tons of celebrities it was just packed with celebrities and she was dancing on stage and then I went over there and I started dancing with her and then and then I, I, I was probably dancing with her for a good five to ten minutes and then then I um I then I showed her the picture that I took of her and then she I told her that I took it and then she started crying because she remembered that whole entire experience. Oh that's so, so sweet. That's that was really cool. cool. Whoa. Awesome. Huh. Um, I do want to ask you about business photography and fitness. How mm -hmm. heavily edited are the photos? Like we're warping people's bodies, right? I have Photoshop and I certainly look really great on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in my pictures, I, 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 I use Photoshop, but not, not too much. Like I don't like a super process look, but you know, there's, um, it just depends on the photographer. I mean, some photographers use a lot of Photoshop and some don't. So it just depends on, well, probably what you see out there is probably heavily, heavily Photoshop. So yeah, well, like I, I the fitness magazines and stuff, I, I imagine are just like insane comparing the for what it was to what ends up being published. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. How can you tell, like, is there a telltale sign when you're like, Ugh, she added two more arms or whatever? <laughs> Um, I mean, it, yeah, you, you can. It just depends on how, how it looks, but yeah. <laughs> you know when you see it. Yeah, All right. So now that you've had this transformation, what, what are your goals moving forward? Um, well, the transformation is a, it's an ongoing thing. So, yeah, like you know, 
now I'm focused on building, um, since I lost the weight, now it's time to build more muscle. Mm -hmm. And then I always want to, you know, I'm focusing on, um, on my core, you know, I want a, a more defined six pack, but you know, everything's a work in progress. Heck yeah. I feel that. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Sure. Thanks so much for having me. I feel like I need to do more experimenting. Maybe not with my water, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where can the Fitheads find you online? Look at your photos, see your transformation. Yeah. So um, you, you can go to my Instagram. It's at David C. Lee Photography, letter C. And then my website is dclee.net. And that's all my photography and videos. Awesome. Yeah. His Instagram is fire. Everyone go follow. That's really awesome. <laughs> Thanks. It's pretty annoying, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Utah pictures are dope. All right, cool. And thanks to the Fitheads. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts and please give us a rate and review. Now we're asking for that because that's actually super helpful and we always forget. So if you're listening, help us out and we will see you next week. <laughs>